Hey guys, hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is Patrick Lyons, I'm 25 years old, and I've never had a drink of alcohol. I know it's a pretty weird start to the video, but it's a true statement and it's a conversation that comes up a lot, especially when I'm in situations with alcohol. And so I wanted to just tell you my story, tell you my perspectives, and uh, if you are someone who doesn't drink, maybe you can relate. And if you are someone who drinks, maybe you can relate better to people like myself and others who choose not to drink. It isn't a super common thing. Like, I have been through high school and four and a half years of college. I went to the University of Texas at Austin, and there is easily at least a party every single day of the week, and if you're talking about Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there's probably 10, 20 plus parties across like campus, not like on campus, but in the apartments and housing areas uh, outside of campus. The point that I'm getting at is that alcohol is constantly available. Like if you wanted to drink and you go to a public university like the University of Texas especially, it is very easy to get your hands on alcohol. Um, that's that's just the, the fact of the matter. But Alcohol is the one drug that you have to justify not consuming. And what I mean by that is that usually with other drugs, it's like people are like, oh yeah, totally makes sense that you don't do X, Y, Z thing because it's, it's a drug. But alcohol is like the normal social drug. It's the thing that many, many years ago was just established as the norm, the thing that you would have at parties, get together, social outings, all of that. And so it's been accepted as like the mainstream thing. And so it's more so um, rare or an oddity if you don't do it. At least that is the, the mainstream perception from my perspective. And so when I end up at parties, situations where there's not alcohol and I am found with my red solo cup and people say, what are you drinking? And I just say water, cause that's what I do. I go to parties, I fill up a red solo cup with water. Uh, People are always like, they want to know why. why. Why aren't you drinking? Why are you choosing to drink water? It's not always coming from a standpoint of judgment. I would say most of the time it's not. It's usually just a curiosity thing. Like, you're so used to seeing people drink alcohol, you want to know, why is this guy drinking water? Uh, it's just, you know, it's a topic of conversation. So, I want to answer that. I know that was like a long preface, but hopefully it makes sense where I'm coming from. Before I get into my reasons, I want to backtrack a couple steps to explain how it got to where it is today for me. Basically, when I was growing up, I'm in the, the childhood home that I grew up in right now, and when I was here as a child, I wasn't really exposed to alcohol. It wasn't something that was around me. If I had to guess, I wouldn't. I would say that I didn't see alcohol until I was like 10 years old for the first time, and it was only because it was a special occasion at a wedding. And it was the wedding of a cousin of mine, and obviously, like the adults there are drinking, and so I had uh, the offer to try a sip of someone's like margarita and I very distinctly remember this I I'd, I'd like sipped it and I literally like spit it out because it was so gross I was like I can't I can't consume this like as a 10 year old I just couldn't do it um so I went to the the bartender and had like a I don't know I think it was called a virgin Shirley temple yeah that's what it's called so as a 10 year old that was the closest I got to it then another five years passed by and I went to another wedding and this time I think it was of my sister and uh, my brothers were having a raspberry daiquiri and that looked really good and it sounded like a delicious drink. So again, I, t I take a sip of it and I literally spit it out because it tasted so gross. I was like, I can't do this. This is disgusting. Um, ironically, shortly after that, I was on like this fitness program where I was following like this recipe guide of sorts uh, and there was a drink that was supposed to replicate eggnog I think it was so you, you're using like some kind of like vanilla ish protein powder and then like I don't know cinnamon or something and then you put like one tablespoon of rum I think that's what it was so I had that and so I guess technically I was drinking alcohol for a couple days uh, a couple weeks whatever as like a 15 year old but I couldn't taste it it was only a tablespoon so I also couldn't feel it it wasn't it didn't feel like I was drinking alcohol. It was literally just like cooking. Like when you cook, you use alcohol and at least some of it is burned off. Obviously this wasn't being a cooked uh, beverage concoction thing. It was just, it was there. That's just to provide you the context of like, those are literally the only circumstances in my entire life in which I have consumed alcohol to any degree. So you're talking like 10 year old, spit it out. 15 year old, spit it out. 15 year old protein shakes, basically wasn't even any alcohol in there. Other than that, there has never been a single instance in my life that I have consumed alcohol. If for any reason you feel like, well, those kind of count, Patrick, then I can at least say, okay, it's been 10 years, my entire adulthood, my entire, like the, the second half of my teenage years, more than half of my teenage years, I've never had alcohol. So 
That is the, the full context, and now I wanna get into the reasons why. Because there are many people who don't drink until they're 18 or 21 because of like uh, social norms and the context you're in. Maybe you, you get to college and uh, maybe it becomes the legal drinking age, and that's when you start. But obviously, I've now gone many years past that and I still haven't drank, why? So the first thing that I like to say is that I genuinely get along fine in social settings without it. Like when I was in high school, I didn't really go to any parties in which there was alcohol there. So it wasn't like I was tempted or had like a thing that I needed to say no to. But once I got to college, like I said, there's parties literally every single day. I definitely went to those and I had a great time at them. And that was the thing. It was like, I had an amazing time in these social settings where I was like interacting with new people and, and hanging out with friends. Uh, around like large groups of people and large amounts of alcohol, but I didn't choose to have the alcohol because I got along so well without it. And that's the big thing is like, if you feel like alcohol is a social crutch and that like you have to have it to get along in a social setting, I would challenge you to like find settings in which you are comfortable or to challenge yourself to try settings in which you just say, you know what, I'm not gonna drink alcohol, I'm gonna see how it is. Because if you're relying on alcohol for the experience, then I guess like I would just say maybe there's something that you could do to like improve the social experience in a sober standpoint. I'm not saying that you need to not drink ever, but I'm saying like you can totally get along in, in social settings without it. You just need to be in the right people in the right context. So find those people, find those contacts. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is the taste because like as a 10 year old and a 15 year old I validated for myself that I absolutely hated the taste literally had to spit it out couldn't swallow it um, So that's the other thing and I know that people always say like well You'll you'll adapt to the taste you'll get used to it and it's like yeah that might be true But like I don't want to get to that point um, <laughs> I don't I don't feel like Drinking so much that I eventually am like yeah the taste is fine even though it's it's horrible so that's another. Um, another thing is like this, the fear of losing control. Because I I definitely am the type of person who likes to feel in control of situations, um, not in an overbearing way, but like just in a, I want to feel like everything that is happening is my, my, my sober conscious thought and choice and that no like substance is altering that. Um, and I also, like that's number three, and then number four is very related to that, and that is that I tend to have a bit of an obsessive personality. It's like I either really, really like things or I don't really care for them at all. Um, like I can think of, you know, like fitness. I go all in on it. I think of YouTube, I go all in on it. I think of um, like the friends who I deeply, truly care about. I go all in on those friendships. Those are just a couple examples. Like if I like something, I like it a lot and I dedicate myself to it. And so if that was um, with alcohol, that would be alcoholism. So obviously that's not something that I want for myself. And then um, there's this tiny piece of me that is kind of about taking care of people where it's like, I, I like being that sober presence at parties because I can potentially help people if there's a need. Like there have definitely been parties where there was someone who needed to get home safely. Um, or there was the danger of people not getting home in a car safely because they weren't, you know, apt to drive, things like that. And so like, I definitely want to be that person if need be. It's not like I'm going to the party to be the designated driver, but it's like, I'm obviously there if it's needed. Um, <laughs> then in kind of a quirky way, I will say that like, if you were the sober presence at a party where people are not sober, it's a good time. Like you get to see some wild, crazy things and you have the full sober perspective of it. You can tell people what happened the next day and it's always a really funny situation to be in. So um, definitely a big fan of that. Um, and then after all of that, like after I kind of like got to go through this reflective process of like, okay, I'm going to these parties, I'm enjoying it, I'm getting along fine. Obviously I don't want to try it because it, um, it doesn't taste well. I want to stay in control. I want to be that sober presence. I don't want to get obsessed. Once all of that happened, then I got super into fitness. And so then it was like, okay, well now it really doesn't make sense to drink alcohol because um, what I can say is that it is possible to achieve fitness goals while drinking alcohol. Like I know plenty of people who do. Many of my very, very close friends are very, very fit and drink on a regular basis. But what I can say for a fact is that it will never work for your goals. What I mean is that there's never something about alcohol that will contribute in a positive way to the achievement of your fitness goals. It can only hurt you or neutralize. Um, and this is because of the way that your body processes alcohol. Alcohol is treated by your body as a poison um, because it is a poison. And so what that means is that 
let's say that you consume alcohol, uh, a cheeseburger, pizza, french fries, all that stuff. Your body will selectively burn off the alcohol first because your body is trying to survive. It's like there's a poison in us. We need to burn off those calories first. And alcohol does have calories. Every gram of alcohol has seven calories. And so what this means is that I'm just going to make up a random number. Let's say that you've consumed 700 calories worth of alcohol. On average, it's like seven drinks. That means that your body will burn off selectively those 700 calories first. And if your body has not burn off uh, the equivalent number of calories, like an energy expenditure of the additional calories you've consumed in food, like the example of that pizza, french fries, cheeseburger, whatever, then those calories become stored as fat. That's where the problem lies within the consumption of alcohol and uh, eating food on top of that. And so what this means is that by consuming alcohol, if you are not in a calorie deficit, even after the consumption of the alcohol, you are far more likely to store the excess calories as fat. Um, and so that's just one of many reasons why it's like highly disadvantageous to consume alcohol um, when you're working towards specific fitness goals, especially along the lines of fat loss. So that's a big thing. And then the other element is that alcohol directly impedes muscle protein synthesis. Muscle protein synthesis is the process that occurs that literally allows you to pack on new muscle tissue. Um, it's like after you work out, the reason why you need to eventually consume protein is because that protein helps with the um, your body's ability to gain muscle to repair the muscle that was broken down from the workout. However, if you work out and then consume alcohol, it impedes muscle protein synthesis, reduces it by 37%. Even if you add protein to that mixture, so like you work out, you drink protein or consume chicken, doesn't matter what kind of protein, but you have protein at all, and then you consume alcohol, muscle protein synthesis is still impaired by 25%. So at a maximum, or at a minimum rather, you're looking at a 25% uh, reduction in your body's ability to create new muscle protein. And that's all just because of consuming alcohol. And those are just a couple of the reasons. Like if you consume an absurd amount of, um, of alcohol, I can't remember the exact amount off the top of my head, but like more than a couple drinks basically. Uh, for males, it decreases your testosterone levels, at least in, in an acute phase. If you are a chronic um, drinker of excess, uh, then you will have long-term impairments in testosterone levels. So... There's just, like I said, there's nothing good about alcohol for your health. And so it's just like there, when you combine all of those kind of like socially oriented reasons with the health oriented reasons, there just weren't any reasons for me to consume alcohol. And, you know, now a couple of years out of college, um, I still end up going to, you know, like social get togethers, bars, clubs, restaurants, all that where alcohol is present. Um, and I'm still able to make that choice not to drink. And it will al almost always come as a question like, do you mind me asking why? And there, there's a reason for me not to answer. Like I always, you know, tell the truth of why, why I'm not drinking. But um, that the fact that people question and are curious isn't uh, a sign that you need to like conform to this social norm. It's just like a thing that can make you different um, by your own choice if you choose not to drink. So that is uh, about everything for why I don't drink alcohol after 25 years of life. Um, if you don't drink, I would love to hear in the comments like why you've chosen not to drink and what your experience has been like. Have there ever been situations where you've either felt pressured or people ask you questions, that sort of thing. And then if you do drink, I'd be curious to know like why do you? Like why do you choose to drink? Um, and do you choose to drink like despite knowing these things that I've mentioned, like especially around the health aspect or is this stuff new to you? Just curious to, to know your thoughts. But Otherwise, that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this, just me sharing uh, pieces of my life that are, to me, unique about me. So uh, if you'd like to see more, just let me know in the comments and I'll make more of these videos in the future. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.